Positives and negatives? <laughs> okay. Uh, shinks. Positive. Easy. A negative? Not enough shinks. Ilka? It's time to get to work. What is good, y'all? Soul here, and welcome back to my story mode. So a lot of you may have clicked on this video thinking, okay, what in the world is this guy talking about? The positives and negatives, we don't know everything yet. Let's back it up, Slippy. Let me explain. When I ask about the positives and negatives in the current state of the game, I'm asking you guys what you guys feel is positive and negative about the games so far. We've gotten a ton of new information since the last time I asked this question and had you guys answer it, so we're gonna do something very similar. Last week in a poll, I asked you guys to give me one positive and one negative opinion when it comes to Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. For one thing, let me just say thank you guys for coming out to that, okay? Y'all really filled that poll up, meaning we've got a lot of responses to go through today, and it's gonna be fun just talking about your guys' opinions. I wanna jib-jab a little bit. I'm looking forward to it. So before we jump straight into things, I feel like it should be noted that I did another community tab post very similar to this one, but for Pokemon Legends Arceus. I feel like that one might have slipped under the radar a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and push it right here. Make sure to go to the community tab after this video and put your responses about one positive and one negative opinion regarding Pokemon Legends Arceus because we're going to be doing something very similar. Again, don't miss your chance to talk about the games. I'm sure you have a lot of opinions about them and you want to get them voiced. I want to talk about your guys' opinions. So, again, make sure you go hit that up. Don't miss your chance. That's all I'm going to say. Okie doke, I think that just about does it for all the extra stuff. Why don't we start getting into your guys' opinions, positive or negative, regarding Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Kicking things off, we got a big one from Charzink who says... Positive, I really love the way these games are being presented in terms of graphics, returning as many features as possible, such as Pokeball seals, the underground contests, etc. Not only that, but also improving on them like following Pokemon, not limited to Amity Square and the Grand Underground with overworld encounters. It just brings the game to life. Just the fact that it's a Sinnoh game makes it the best game of all time. Negative. My main concern as of right now, given the information that we have so far, is how intensive Platinum integration will be in these games, especially as someone whose first games was Pokemon Platinum. So far, it looks like Platinum integration is less than or equal to 5%. Okay, so awesome. As far as your positives, for the most part, I definitely agree. I don't know about the best game of all time, we haven't played it yet, and quite frankly, even as much as I love 4th Gen, it is still very hard to debate if it's really the best Pokemon game of all time, or the best game of all time in general. Debatable. It's definitely up there though, don't even get it twisted my guy. As far as your negatives though, I completely understand where you're coming from. As of right now, there is simply way too much confusion as to if these games are really following Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, the base forms, or Pokemon Platinum, the superior form. Pokemon Platinum was literally in every single way an improvement from the original two games, and not following that example for these remakes is gonna hurt a lot. So hopefully they play it smart and they add on to a lot of what Pokemon Platinum helped improve on for 4th Gen. Also. I noticed in the rest of this that you mentioned the official updated map. Why have I not seen this yet? Can somebody link that to me or something? Because I have no idea what anybody's talking about. I have not seen that map. And yes, one could say that that is very irresponsible of a PokeTuber not to be updated on something like that. But my counter argument is that I am lazy. <laughs> so there you have it. Let's move on. Next along is ShyJ who says, Positive. Contests look pretty fun now, so it gives me hope that there's a lot of side content that's been upgraded. Negative. Still not a fan of the animations like Fire Punch where they just put a 2D fist image on the opponent. I was hoping they would be better considering how nice the Hyper Beam from the first trailer looked. First off, y'all, let it be known that we can never let ourselves be fooled like that again. Hyper Beam from Pokemon Sword and Shield in that trailer gave us way too much hope, alright? It, it looked like that Pokemon, I forgot which Pokemon got hit, I think it was a Gyarados or something, got hit by that Hyper Beam, and we thought we were in for something crazy, but no. 
<laughs> no, not in the slightest. Unfortunately, recycled or very simple assets is what I've come to expect from Pokemon at this point, so I probably just didn't even notice that they did that, but again, it's not something that surprised me at all. But hey, as far as your positives, you're absolutely right. I am super looking forward to contests, probably way more than I should, and I know for a fact that I'm going to be spending an absurd amount of time with that, all right? We're gonna, sh we're gonna dress Shinx up real nice, I promise you. I'm going to have a Shinx specifically for contests. Do not play that game with me. Next along, we have Skills Hunter who says, Positive, I love how Elka showed us that the game footage is in fact not final. Negative, it just feels too much like a remaster rather than a remake, staying so true to the originals with minimal changes to the remake. Okay, I gotta say, I'm very surprised that you considered your positive an actual positive. I see that and I'm like, wait a minute, the game footage still isn't final? We are literally two months away, how much more are you possibly adding? Or I guess more specifically in Pokemon's case, what the hell still needs to be fixed? Just saying, I don't see that game footage not final situation around as often as I do with Pokemon, or at least not with the last couple of games. That's kind of concerning to me. And then as far as your negative goes, absolutely valid. Here's the thing though. So far, the only thing that we know for sure that's one-to-one -one is the overworld layout of the map. And even on that front, we still aren't 100% sure because we haven't seen any of the puzzles yet. So, who knows, man. So we're gonna go ahead and move along here with Do I Have To 26. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I love that name. Anyway, Do I Have To who says, Positive, I really like the graphics of the entire game. The chibi overworld looks great with Pokemon following you and the in-battle graphics are cool too. Negative, the in-battle models staying the same as they have been since X and Y. I know it was the same in Sword and Shield, but it would have been nice to see some new ones. Maybe like Chimchar's idle animation does a few flips and then celebrates almost like it's flexing that it's better than you. I don't know, I just want my Pokemon to feel more alive than what they are, which just makes me feel like Paul from the anime. First things first, homie, never compare yourself to Paul from the anime. Nobody is as bad as Paul from the anime. So as far as your positive goes, I really have to say you are probably one of the very few people that actually go out of their way to actually praise this game's graphics. Most people still aren't happy with it. You would be very shocked at how many people are very unhappy with how this game looks. But I'm glad to see that there's some people in the underlying underground here that still love to see how it looks. I'm glad. As far as the in-battle models go for the Pokemon, I'm going to say the exact same thing that I said for battle animations. I am not shocked at all that they are still consistently recycling assets because they don't want to spend more money and more time to make actual animations and more lively Pokemon for whatever reason. Apparently that is too timely and too costly for one of the biggest franchises on earth. Okay, cool beans bro. Next along we have Hero of the Wild who says, Positive, I think that Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl has more content under that $60 price tag than base Sword and Shield had for the same price. Even if Sword and Shield has more Pokemon in them, there are just more things to do in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Negative, there are not enough new features for fans to play the same game again, especially for those who own the Platinum version. So as far as your positive goes, you're absolutely right. I will take most games over base Sword and Shield almost any day of the week. It's a lot better now, don't get me wrong, but base release? That was kind of a yikes. As far as your negative goes, I can't really blame you there, but we do have to remember a couple of things. It's not only trying to pertain to older fans, it's also trying to pertain to new ones as well. There's plenty of people that are into Pokemon now that never got to experience 4th gen as it was. So yeah, while there may not be a lot for us as the older fans, they are going to prioritize the newer fans. They always have, and frankly, they always most likely will. It's frustrating to move towards the future like that, I know, but with Sword and Shield and even Let's Go as examples, can't really argue that. Next along here, we have the Eevee Squad D once again, who says, The only negative is the fan base. The whole game is amazing. This is the energy that I live for. Keep that up. And stop trying to cook my boy. Moving along, we have Stacy the DM, who says, Positive. It feels like Ilka is taking the time to make a Pokemon remake that delivers and shows a level of passion. The new Underground is a solid improvement on something that was really great, and following Pokemon seems like a natural addition for the region. 
Negative. I really enjoy how the graphics look on the whole, but personally, I'm still not a huge fan of the chibis in particular. I'm just sort of disappointed whenever I see them followed by the in battle sprites that are full sized and look really good. So I definitely feel your negative there. When you're coming off of a game like Sword and Shield and then you're coming off of the last remakes, which is Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, you feel like you kind of got gypped. Why couldn't we have that level of energy for these games, but with more passion than you've ever had before? I understand, I get it. Why they decided to take this almost seemingly one-to-one -one direction of making these chibis look exactly like they did in the original games with their sprites and things like that is going to be beyond me forever. I don't know who pulled the trigger on that decision, but what's done is done, it's almost here, and nothing can really change about that now. However though, as far as your positives go, I absolutely agree. I'm loving what Ilka is doing with the region now, with the new costumes and the new underground and things like that. We're getting into a newer region that is going to be fun to explore again, most definitely. Next along, we have Ask the Truth, who says, Positive, I'm genuinely really, really excited and happy with how this game is turning out. The chibi art style was honestly the best direction they could have gone with these remakes. Making them in the Sword and Shield engine would have only reinforced the same issues that Sword and Shield had. Poor depth of the world, feeling barren, etc. But with this art style, not only do you return to Sinnoh in a more beautiful art style, you get to have that fun same way with everything they've added. Models look great, lighting looks great, the world looks great, it feels lively. Negative. There is genuinely no excuse for there not to be a battle frontier. Yet again, we did not get it. Again. It honestly doesn't make sense. Masuda's reasoning for cutting the Battle Frontier in Ores was because kids don't play Battle Frontier. Yet you put the Battle Tower instead? Sir, I've got news for you. No one gives a damn about the Battle Tower, LMAO. It's contradictory. He claimed that no one plays Battle Frontier, so he replaced it with a thing that even less people play. We're in the exact same boat when it comes to your positives. I absolutely agree that this art style was probably the best direction they could have chosen and getting a new engine worked out way more beautifully than it would have if they reused the exact same engine that they used for the previous game. Cause here's the funny thing, the character models, totally fine, I rock with it. Everything else? The inconsistency literally hurt the graphics in an unfixable way and that is tragic and something that should never happen again. Clearly they've definitely learned their lesson considering both Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl and Pokemon Legends both have very consistent art styles. They were debatably iffy at first, but the more you look at it, the more it grows on you, and the more you realize that it looks way more consistent and bearable than that of Sword and Shield, so you can't really complain too much. It is a step up. Now when it comes to your negatives here, I will be completely honest, the difference between the Battle Frontier and the Battle Tower are very linear to me because I didn't really mess with them all that much back in the day, so I just know for a fact that apparently the Battle Frontier is completely superior in every way, shape, and form, and everybody was upset when it didn't come back in Oras for whatever reason, so they were really hoping that it would make its comeback here and so far that does not seem to be the case and that's another thing that people are upset about especially because we're really teetering between if we're getting every ounce of content from pokemon diamond and pearl or pokemon platinum and apparently the battle frontier is one of the biggest common denominators when it comes to that situation it's one of those situations where it doesn't hurt to add it in any way everything about it would just help the game so not having it just doesn't make sense in the long run if I were a developer, I would definitely want people to be playing my game for as long as possible, so not taking the steps to add something that would help that idea just doesn't add up to me. I don't understand. So if it's truly not there, I don't know. I don't know what they were thinking, why they did it, but it happened and that was dumb on their part. Not much we could do there. That is just a fat L. But hey, this is Game Freak Pokemon and Nintendo, so what's new? We kind of got to move along here. Next we have Dono42024 who says, Positive. There are so many I could think of for this game, but I'll stick with just one. Everybody loves the concept of following Pokemon returning, especially now that it looks amazing compared to Sword and Shield DLC. It's going to be an awesome feeling running around Sinnoh with all of the amazing mons featured in the game. Negative. Although this is not 100% confirmed, it appears that HMs will be returning in these games. There has been a few clips and screenshots released showing that Rock Smash Boulder in Orberg Mine, as well as Rock Climb Walls in various locations. Let's tackle your positive first. 
Absolutely. You already know that Shinx to Luxray is always going to be up front in the party, bro. Do not ever question me on that and do not even test me. Those three will always be up front. Those are the leaders. They are my captains. I don't know what tomfoolery they were messing around with in Sword and Shield's DLC, but that was not the following mechanic that we asked for, bro. Something about that just did not feel right at all, okay? Don't get it twisted, I'm grateful that we got it back at all, but I'm not gonna sit here and say that they did it well. <laughs> I'd be lying. They kept it simple, and they kept it fresh looking. That's literally all we asked for. Thank you guys. Thank you. As for your negatives, it's really still hard to say, believe it or not. Again, we're moving towards a more modern version of Pokemon, and we have not had actual HMs since, I believe, 6th gen. To do something like that would be such a huge step back that it'd be almost alarming. Why would you guys sabotage yourselves like that when you obviously have ways to come up with mechanics that make it so that we don't have to use HM slaves anymore just to get around the world? Come on now. Just saying, you may find me crazy right now, but I still think that it's too early to just confirm that HMs are back in their entirety, okay? Again, we haven't had that for a long time now, and I'm sure that by now they've figured out the fact that Pokemon don't get used properly when we have to use HMs on them. That's a huge waste of space. We enjoy the puzzles, that's fine, bring those back in full. We just don't like the sacrifices that we had to make to get through them. They were completely unnecessary. So for the time being, I'm just going to go ahead and assume that there's no way in hell that they're going to bring back HMs. There is no way they would shoot themselves in the foot like that. That don't make no sense at all. And for the sake of not getting repetitive, we're going to go ahead and end it off here with Dope Magic, who says, Positive. The of life changes that revamp the contest system, revamp the underground, etc. These will extend the playtime and overall enjoyment of the game. Negative. There's so much unexplained lore in Sinnoh that I think should be expanded upon, but limiting themselves to a 1-to-1 -one -one remake is really holding the game back story-wise. I'll say it like this, again, contests and underground and being able to customize your character are the three biggest things that really help sell this game for me. Those are what's really going to keep me hooked and invested in the long term when it comes to these remakes because they didn't look like that or feel like that back in the originals. So if there's any big changes, these are it and I'm very grateful that they're here. Now as far as your negative goes, really the only thing that I could think of for that is the fact that Pokemon Legends exists. That is solely to explain more lore when it comes to the Sinnoh region, so I feel like they kind of did that on purpose. They made the remake so that people know about 4th gen, and then they made these new games, or this new game rather, Pokemon Legends, so that people could experience the beginning of this region, which is something that we've never done before. So it's something. You could disagree with me, but I think that it's something. So for the most part here, that just about wraps it up considering the fact that a lot of these are very repetitive because I know that a lot of you really wanted the Battle Frontier back and you guys wanted more Platinum-esque changes rather than Diamond and Pearl changes. And I agree with that. I would have preferred Platinum as well, but at the end of the day, we still just don't know exactly what they took from Diamond and Pearl and from Pokemon Platinum. So unfortunately, we're just going to have to find out the hard way because who knows, this could be better than both. But it's very weird that they're hiding the fact that those bigger changes are there or not. I, I really don't know what to say to that, but we'll see how things play out. That's all I got. Whatever the case may be, whatever this recent presents showed us, it turned a lot of people off for the games and it turned a lot of people on toward the game. It's not going to be perfect for everyone, but the people that are excited, I'm sure that we're going to have a grand time. That's all I got. I, I really don't know what else to say with that. So. I'm gonna leave it at that. So that just about does it for this video here. Maybe you guys have some opinions that weren't noted. Things that weren't noticed or talked about amongst the comments in this tab, uh, post, community post, whatever you want to call it. What do you guys think? Is there anything that we missed? Anything that we didn't cover? Maybe somebody's negative is your positive. Maybe somebody's positive is your negative. Let me know everything you guys think in the comment section below because you know that I'm always down there with you guys. But with that, I'm going to skedaddle on out because it do seem to be that time. Thank you guys ever so much for watching. I truly do hope you enjoyed. Do me the greatest favor of dropping a like and a comment and consider subscribing for more content just like this. And with that, I'm out, y'all. Thanks again. Hope you enjoyed and I'll be seeing you guys in the next video. Do me the greatest favor of taking good ass care and I'll see you all next time. Bye!